anything to do with what's important to you, with what's important to your kids, what's important in our communities of making sure that they're safe. They're not focusing on policy. They're not focusing on substance because they've got nothing to stand on. Nothing to stand on. So what they resort to is exactly what you're seeing here. It's what I've experienced being directed towards me by leaders in the Democrat Party. It's what Adam is dealing with from his opponent, is attacking his character rather than focusing on substantive policy differences. Because there are big differences to focus on. The fact that his opponent is spending a whole lot of money coming in and pretending to be somebody that she's not, running away from her voting record where she has voted 100% of the time with President Biden and his agenda, instead essentially lying to you and saying, oh no, I'm an independent person, I'm an independent thinker. Well, let's look at the substance of what this administration is pushing. They are trying to take away the rights of our parents to raise our kids, to instill the values and principles that you know are important by saying, no, we in the government know what's better for your kids than you do. You don't get to have a say in what kind of education they receive or what kinds of books they are learning from. I spent some time with parents in Virginia who really broke this open in the last couple of years. And I had heard about these books and disturbing things that, that uh, were being put in the hands of our kids. And I thought, well, that's not right. Obviously, what Terry McAuliffe said about parents don't get a say in our kids' education, obviously that's not right. But they brought me some of these books and showed them to me, books that are geared towards kids in middle school. I have never seen more sexually graphic images than I saw in these graphic novels for kids, 12 years old, 13 years old, 14 years old. This is the kind of stuff they're pushing for. Masto voted for allowing biological males to compete against biological females in sports. So we know how unfair this is, but there's a deeper issue here that I want you to think about. I want you to think about this as you're thinking about going and who you need to talk to who may be undecided still, who may not be as informed as you are about her record, and how it contrasts with the leadership that Adam will bring. When we look at the issue of undermining Title IX, this is the 50th anniversary of Title IX. It was put in place out of a recognition that there are biological differences between the male and female sex. That was why it was put in place. So what this administration, the Democrats are pushing in lockstep, I have not heard a single one, a single one speak out against this is by pushing this change in Title IX, they're undermining it, they're taking away the rights and opportunities of women and girls across this country, they are erasing us as women as an entire category of people, saying there is no such thing as a woman. And even more dangerous than that, they are denying the reality of objective truth, because if they refuse to recognize the objective truth that there are biological differences between men and women. Therefore, there is no such thing as truth. Therefore, they get to decide what truth is on any given day, on any given issue. And what that, the effect that that has on us is there are no boundaries then. If we as a people can't agree that there is such a thing as truth, and that it's whatever they say it is, we end up in a situation where Things like pedophilia are being normalized by saying, well, these are just minor attracted people. This is what's at stake in this election. This is why I'm here. Adam has been very clear about his positions on a whole host of issues. He's been very clear with you on what kind of leadership he will bring to Washington and how he is loyal to and motivated by one singular focus, serving you. Not serving any special interests in Washington, not putting any political interests first. He has worn the cloth of this country, as I do, and he is proud, as I am, to serve. He has already taken an oath when he put that uniform on to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. 
There are threats to our freedom and our democracy that are coming from within. We are seeing them play out every day, every time they try to silence us, every time they say, oh, we in the government get to decide what is information versus disinformation. We get to decide, working with big tech, what you are allowed to see and say and hear, not you, because in their minds, we're too stupid to think for ourselves. They don't believe that we have the intelligence to analyze information, to think for ourselves, to determine what our own views are. I agree. <laughs> to have, and this, this was one of the main reasons why I left the Democrat Party. How... The, the oath that I took to support and defend our Constitution, both as a soldier as well as as a member of Congress, is seared into my heart. How could I allow myself to be associated with a party that hates freedom, with a party that's undermining our freedom, and most dangerously is in power and weaponizing our public institutions like the Department of Justice, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Education, the Department of Health and Human Services, the list goes on and on. They are weaponizing these institutions that exist to serve us against their political opponents and against us. Anyone who dares to dissent, anyone who dares to challenge their power. So the mandate that every one of us has that our founders gifted to us in this country, when they chose those first three words, we the people, they were talking to us. They weren't talking to only those people in Washington or only those people uh, who live in certain states or who believe certain things. They were talking to every single one of us as Americans. We have a responsibility to take ownership of our country and our future. And what we do here in the next 11 days will determine that. It's up to us. If we're pissed off about the direction that we are headed, if we are angered by how far and quickly our country has spiraled downward over the last two years, don't just complain about it. Take action. So I'm telling you here in the, next, in the next 11 days, I guarantee you there are people in your life who are still not sure who they're going to vote for. So I know you know, which is great. What we need you to do, what our country needs us to do to save our country and protect our freedom, and I don't use those words lightly, look within your own heart. Think about those you love and care about in your life. Think about what it is that makes this country so special. Find those people at work, at church, uh, your family, your friends, and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with them. Get past the left versus right, Democrat, Republican, all the labels. Set everything else aside. Speak from your heart about what you love and what you care for and what you are fighting for. That will move them and motivate them to do the same within their own hearts. There is nothing short of our freedom and our future that's at stake in this election. Because Adam Laxalt needs to be that 51st senator that allows us, the American people, you, the people of Nevada, to have a check on the power that this administration is abusing that is harming us as people in this country. So I am, 
so proud and so thrilled to stand with you. You're listening to what I'm saying. I can tell your wheels are turning already, thinking like, okay, who do I know that doesn't already know who they're going to vote for? I guarantee you there's at least a few. Look through your phone. Look at your friends on Facebook. We got a lot of work to do. We can't afford to be tired or complacent, thinking, ah, you know, Adam's doing great. He's got it. That's cool. We can go back and go about our business. Went to a, 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 a cool rally. No. These are your marching orders, my friends. We got a lot of work to do. Take nothing for granted. Every vote counts. If you care and you love this country, lift your voices. Because if we don't, I'm afraid we'll lose the country that we love. I am so proud to join you in welcoming Adam Laxalt, your next senator of the state of Nevada.